Hi. I'm Zelda's Medic. Hello. Uh, this is my channel. This is going to be a guide on how to RNG stationary legendary Pokemon for RNG Reporter on 5th generation. I'm going to RNG a Cresselia and on my Black 2 game. Now that's out of the way. I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about X and Y because that is coming out in like three weeks or something. I don't know. Not very long. It's coming out really soon. And I'm a little worried about how RNG is going to work in these games. I have no idea if it's even going to be possible to RNG these games. Um, I don't know the details of how it works. I don't know how the research is done, but I do know that if it is impossible, I may be out of YouTube job. So um, I was just going to kind of ask you guys if there is anything else that I could possibly talk about or make guides for um, with this channel. Um, if that is the case. If it turns out that I can RNG in X and Y, no problem. I really like making videos. I really like the feedback that I get. Um, it's definitely added a lot of flavor to my life. And so that, that being said, here's the guide. First, you want to click on Time Finder and Fifth Generation Time Finder. Remember to select the correct profile from the top drop down list. If this is the first time you're doing this, make sure that you select a wide range of months because finding a seed is very hard. Where it says min max frame, make sure it says 1 1. This makes things so much easier. Select the desired IVs, nature, ability if it applies, gender if it applies, synchronize frames, and search for nearby shiny frame. I always use a synchronizer because this means I can reuse the same seed for all my stationary legendaries for one game. And that's actually what I'll end up doing here. Because we're cutting out IV frames by making our IV frame one of one, so we start on the I target IV frame, it means that finding a seed will take a very long time. So for the sake of this video, I am going to be using a seed that I've used before in my game. So I'm going to be changing the date to a month and a year that I know I will find a seed on. Now obviously you won't find one this quickly because I cut out the search itself, but in your game you want to make sure that your synchronizer is first in your party, so if you're using a synchronizer that has a bold nature, make sure that is first and you have your two chat tots ready. If you're new to RNG, you need to make sure that you have two chat tots in your party that have a recorded chatter. You also want to save your game directly in front of the legendary Pokemon in question. Once you have your two chat tots, your synchronizer, and saved right in front of the Pokemon that you were trying to catch, you can go ahead and go back to your RNG reporter. Next you will right click on your seed and select copy seed to clipboard. If you scroll all the way to the right, you will see the date, time, and key presses for that seed. Click on the method dropdown and select Gen 5 PID RNG, kind of in the middle. Under Encounter Type, change it to Stationary Pokemon. Under Seed Hex, right click and select Paste.
Next, you'll click on Calculate Initial PID RNG Frame. This gives you an idea of where to look for the beginning of your frames. Under Game Settings in your DS, set the date and time to match the date and time in your Time Finder window. I'm using this timing device to sync my DS with a seconds timer. Once you've synced your DS with a seconds timer, which I've just done, you have to wait until the timer runs all the way out to press A to start your Pokemon game. Make sure, as the game is starting, that you're holding the key presses necessary for your seed. Mine is Start, Select, and Up. You will want to hold these buttons all the way until you see the gray Nintendo screen. Once you've started the game, make sure that you say no to Sea Gear, and as soon as you enter the game, spam X to open your Pokemon menu so that you can start advancing the frames with Chatot. If you look in the Time Finder window in the column that says Frame, there will be a number. That is your target frame. In the main window, you will see a column that says Frames. These are the same numbers. You won't always come into the game on the initial PID RNG frame. You can be anywhere from exactly on it to 20 after it as you come into the game. It just depends on the NPCs. Every time you hear Chatot's cry in the summary window, it advances this frame by 1. So if my target frame is 454, that means I have to do about 380 advances. But I'm going to keep track of them with the pitch of Chatot's cry. You'll see me do this shortly. If that is confusing to you, I recommend you look at my Chatot Pitches guide. That sounded medium. Those two sounded about the same. At this point, I've confirmed my seed and I'm going to continue with my advances. After I've gotten to 453, that's when I'll stop and pick up my Cresselia. You always want to stop one before your target frame. Once you have figured out what frame you're on with Chatot's pitches, it's relatively straightforward to keep on track and you don't have to keep count. Stationary Legendary RNG is only difficult because the seeds are so hard to find. With breeding, you can easily find a flawless seed if you're using flawless parents. However, finding a flawless shiny seed that's on the first IV frame is very difficult. So, typically, if you are lucky enough to find a seed, you usually have to do a large amount of advances. This can be really boring. Really, really, really boring. I keep it simple for you guys because I figure you're new at this and you don't want to deal with advancing IV frames. 
There are two different kinds of frames when you're doing this kind of RNG. There's the PID RNG frame, which is what I'm advancing with Chatot, and then there's also an IV frame that you don't have to worry about with eggs and wonder cards. The IV frame is determine, determines the IVs of the Pokemon. So if you're searching for a seed that's already on the first IV frame, you never have to worry about advancing the IV frames. Advancing them can be kind of complicated, especially if you're using the method of walking, because all the turning NPCs in the area will advance your R the PID RNG frame. There are ways of doing it that are a little bit easier, but to keep things simple, I'm just showing you guys how to do it without dealing with the IV frames at all. If you get really good at RNG, there are other options for you, so keep that in mind. Um, this usually takes a while, so I was going to speed through this part, but I feel like it was necessary and good for you guys to see me doing it in person, live, because right now on the screen I'm actually double checking my target frame to make sure I don't pass it by accident. It's kind of the trouble with our in the RNG reporter because I advance it with my down button on the keyboard and I can't really see that far ahead. Actually, I can't see ahead at all. So there is a slight risk of me accidentally passing my target frame. So I usually start to slow down when I get close. Right now I'm in the 400s, so I'm slowing down. Sometimes it's good to scroll down and look for your target. Mine is marked with the three exclamation marks. I think I'm scrolling down now. Sometimes it's good to scroll down and look for your target frame, just to make sure you don't pass it by accident, because if you do, you have to start over. There it is, folks, the shiny Cresselia. I hope this guide was helpful. If you need any extra tips on how to do chatot pitches, I do have a guide specifically for that. Um, I also have lots of other guides for wonder cards, eggs, uh, you name it. If you need a little extra material as far as what you should do. Um, but that's the end of the guide. So uh, I hope you found it useful, and thanks for watching.